Once again, big shout out to the YouTuber known as Black Mind for not only linking to my first video about the unintentional incest between half-siblings in the inner city, but also for putting attention towards my video debunking the narrative that quote-unquote all men are dogs. Please check out his channel. Furthermore, I am on the way to having 1,000 subscribers. Please help me reach that goal. I've got about 990 subscribers right now, 991, so my goal is to get 9 subs in 2 weeks. So, help a brother out. Once again, we're going to revisit some of the concepts in the book Dating Up the Hypergamy Factor by the behavioral economist and author Bobby Sonora. Links to where the book can be obtained are in the description. Please support and endorse this author. On the topic that Chapter 4, The Deadbeat Dad Argument, focuses on is child siring behavior of men. Now, we're going to go back into how this relates into how unintentional incest can happen in inner city communities. I'm going to extrapolate the data onto the inner city narrative. It's often been touted that men in general, black men in particular, are responsible for the single mother epidemic without getting into a discussion about accountability, male agency, and her body, her choice. I want to look to see if this argument that men especially black men, are causing and creating single mothers. A 2006 WebMD article entitled How Many Men Become Fathers by Miranda Heaty has data regarding surveys of male child siring behavior. Pertinent data from the article summarized in Table 3 in the book of Dating Up. The information is as plain as day. Only 47% of males aged 15 to 44 get females pregnant. That means that less than half of men get the quote unquote benefit of mating in the abstract sense. In addition to the fact that less than half of men are responsible for creating single mothers, as the number of children sired by each man, each man increases, rather, the percentage of men siring those children decreases. As you can see, the highest percentage of men who sire children only have one child, followed by two, then three. So men who create the most single mothers are the smallest proportion of the male population. Let's dig a little bit deeper. And to do this again, I'll use the, the US Census Bureau data that I used in the last video, particularly honing in on Chicago. And I also use statistics from the Illinois Department of Health for Illinois statewide data and Chicago specific data. Again, since more than half of the population of Illinois lives in Chicago, it is reasonable to be able to extrapolate statewide statistics onto Chicago and vice versa. The WebMD article points out that a nationwide survey conducted on males ages 15 to 44, whereby there were 4,920 respondents, showed that 47% of men fathered children, mostly in their 20s, and a quarter of them were never married. To point something out that is not stated here, in the data from the previous video, unmarried mothers in Illinois are 39.5%. That's the unmarried rate for mothers. So the unmarried mother rate is 14% higher than, than the unmarried father rate for the same age group. And not that being married is something like a prerequisite, but it's being shown that more men actually are marriage minded than women if you look at the percentages. Um, but this is not to make a value judgment, just to make an observation on, you know, who's really running around and, and um, you know, having a, a lot of frivolous relationships because of course, marriage entails commitment. Uh, the article does go on to mention that the stats were summarized at the beginning, that were begin summarized at the beginning of the video uh, in table three that we, I gleaned from the book Dating Up the Hypergamy Factor. Um, and these and these information, you know, are summarized, but also they have some small tidbits about the age that the men were when they fathered the kids and that most men hadn't finished high school. Uh, most men who hadn't finished high school had a child outside of marriage. So basically what this is telling you here is it speaks to the kind of man that is likely to create the single mother. A man who's in his 20s and who hasn't finished high school. Does that sound like the majority of men to you? I use the data that 
we calculated from the previous video and the statistics to obtain the population of black men aged 15 to 44 in Chicago. That amount was seen to be 178,059. With this, I extrapolated the percentages from the fathering survey onto the Chicago black male population. I found it more useful to combine the, the categories two children and two or more children into the two plus category. Since having a child is a numerically discrete event, you either have two children or you have three or you have four, et cetera, et cetera. So there's two children and two or more. So combining them, um, we basically have men who fathered multiple kids and men who only fathered one child. As you can see, the majority uh, went of these men fathered more than one child at 64% and the ones that only fathered one child are 36%. The number of black kids fathered in 2019 in Chicago was 9,779, about, about roughly one to one. A little bit more men, uh, boys than girls were born. Now here's the logic. Since the majority of the fathers father two or more kids, it also suggests that the majority of the kids born will share a father with someone else. Therefore, I basically inverted the percentage, the percentage, the relative percentages of the cause, which is like getting a woman pregnant, and I applied it to the effect, which is a woman bearing a child. Doing this, we can see that 6,242 black kids in Chicago born in 2019 likely shared fathers. Almost double that of those who did not share fathers. Please disregard the typo in the label as saying children with only one father. Of course, we know that kids can only have one father at a time. Uh, it was just um, it was a typo on my part. But yeah, the, essentially kids that uh, did not share fathers. Going back to our population maps and densities, again, since half of these children are females, it has implications because it means that the 6,242 boys and girls who likely live on the 150 square mile area of Chicago, where 85 to 100% of blacks live, which can be referred to likely as the west and south sides, if dispersed evenly, would be about 42 per square mile. Without going into the details of the number of housing units per square mile, which I may get into into another video to see how likely they are to live in the same housing units. Um, but so we have essentially 21 boys and 21 girls or 22 boys and 20 girls who are all half siblings on average that would live within a mile of each other likely shop at the same stores and probably go to the same restaurants etc and if that doesn't get them to me if that doesn't get them then they'll likely attend one of the 162 high schools in chicago and this is talking about chicago wide not just in those uh not in just in those areas where black folks live and if we look at that that's about 39 per school if evenly spread and in the same age group because they're all being born in the same year. So they're likely going to be in the same grade or within one grade of each other, attending the same school. So basically we will have 20 boys and 19 girls on average who are half siblings attending the same high school around the same grade. Again, it's not far fetched that these these kids who are half siblings would would meet up and or mate or have intercourse with each other and unknowingly have siblings because of the way the child the uh the siring behavior the male siring behavior is uh going down in in that area for more stats and data about sexual economics check out the dating up the hypergamy factor book the links are in the description please support this book and this author and i'll catch you in the next video peace